The Doctor teams up with the Jedi. Don't call him a raccoon. And comics, you should be reading. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Thanks for pressing play. You are watching a brand new episode of Talking Comics, Excalibur CCG TV. I am Chris. I am Mark. Guys, we are Excalibur Comics, Cards, and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, as well as in Texarkana, Texas. You can always find out what's going on with us at three places. Our website, ExcaliburCCG.com, our Twitter, and our Facebook pages, linked down below. Guys, we are talking about the great new comics that are coming out for May 10th, 2017. We are almost halfway through the year, sir. Almost. It is flying by. It really is. It really is. So, hey, hope you guys had a great uh, time at the theaters uh, watching uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Hope you enjoyed that. We're gearing up for free comic book day right now. I got Brian, Brian, Brian Salinas. Got a new shirt, <laughs> new shirt right here, bro. Free comic book day. But guys, before we dive into everything, something real quick for anybody interested, especially our locals. Star Wars Destiny is in this expansion pack. We do have them. They're here. Come get them. Have fun with this. Whatever you do with it, play. because I don't play it. Play. play. It's Star Wars and it's dice. Nice. Oh, and get our dice, too. Yes, get the Excalibur dice. <laughs> get our Excalibur dice, too. So Actually, guys, it may have its own kind of uh, special. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. I yeah. see that now. I'm a complete dummy and noob to this kind of stuff, but it is here, guys. I know there's fans of that. We have it here locally in stock. Yes, so we come, do. Come get it. Come have fun with Star Wars Destiny. Enjoy that and have a blast. Let's dive into some new number ones. Uh, it's going to be a shorter episode this week. We're still getting some things ready for a free comic book day getting stuff knocked out, but we do have great comics to tell you about, plus other things as well, and that will be coming up shortly here in the episode. Thanks for being a part of it so far. Let's start off with something new from DC. I'm going to go ahead and start it off. We got Bug the Adventures of Forager, number one from DC Comics, uh, done by the Allred Brothers. Yeah, I'm getting this. Yes, Lee Allred and Mike Allred. Uh, Lee Allred, I guess, has been a writer for a while. I've only recently come into contact and hearing about him. Yeah, I don't think he's done, like, tons and tons of stuff. No. Uh, He just shows up every once in a while. Yeah, and then works with his brother, Mike Allred. So, have fun with that. Guys, six-issue miniseries. This takes a look at the Forger. They're like the Luna Brothers. Except they're not. They're the Allred Brothers. They're the Allred Brothers. Right. They're not the Almond Brothers. Not the Almond Brothers. But the Allred Brothers. Because there's no whipping post in this book. <laughs> That's awesome. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. But guys, new gods are here with, with the Forger. He's just one, one in the hive before he breaks out of his cocoon and finds himself in a mysterious place where he meets a ghostly girl, a talking teddy bear, and otherworldly weirdos. But they are nothing compared to the evil General Electric, <laughs> who is on the hunt for a reality-bending metal that could alter the fabric of life itself. General uh, Electric. General Electric, baby. I love that. <laughs> uh, to stay one step ahead of him and preserve the multiverse, Forager must travel through an alternate dimension to seek the metal and, in the process, distinguish himself as a new god. We, you know, it's been years, but I loved Cosmic Odyssey. Yeah, and Mike Mignola and Forger was in that too. He had a, he had a, a key part in that years ago. Well, this is kind of a this is still this is part of the Kirby hundred birthday. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, deal that DC's doing. Great. Even point. though it's yeah, even though it's Young Animal and it's kind of funky, but I think Kirby would love that. Uh, this is this is Young Animal. Now that you mention it, and it is a mature readers uh, uh, title for there, but uh, it's also going to be six issue miniseries as well. So, guys, if you're fans of the New Gods, fans of Forger, a fan of what Young Animal is putting out with their imprint, check out Bug, The Adventures of Forger, number one. What's up for you, Mark? Uh, regression, number one, from Image. Ooh. Another Cullen Bun joint. Another Bun. <laughs> uh, Danny Lucart on the art. Yeah. Um, and Cullen Bun is just gold, man. Just about everything he does, I like. Yeah. I mean, a lot of his a lot of his recent stuff has really caught my attention. Yeah. Um, all right. So Adrian is plagued by ghastly walking nightmares. To understand and possibly treat these awful visions, Adrian reluctantly agrees to past life regression hypnotherapy. Yes. While under therapy, Adrian witnesses a scene of horrific debauchery and diabolism. Dang, that's a double D combo you don't want. <laughs> Waking, he is more unsettled than before, and with good reason. Something has followed him back. Yes. Something has come out of his, I guess, his mind from the hypnotherapy. Yes. 
Uh, Adrian descends into a world of occult conspiracy, mystery, reincarnation, and insanity from which there is no escape. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize uh, until I read the the summary here. Uh, what was going to happen with that? It's like, if something comes back, okay, this is going to oh, be interesting. I love the cover for the first one. Yes. Yes, it's, that cover. That we, yeah, we just showed it on screen. So, yeah, yeah that's... Oh, man. Gooey, gooey, creepy, yeah. you know. <laughs> I think stuff. that uh I think that Danny Luckert was the guy that he did he did some art on another image series a little while back. Uh, with uh, the, 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 some doctor... It was a doctor character. I can't remember what it was. Uh, that went after... Um, Man, I can't remember. Drawing a blank. I can't, I'm drawing a blank too, but that, that name looks familiar. But guys, yeah, check out what Colin Bunn is doing with with uh, Regression Number One. Have fun with that. Tell us what you think of that. From Marvel Comics, Rocket Number One. We got Al Ewing and Adam Gorman on board here. I love Al Ewing. He's he's doing some good stuff. I love Al Ewing. He just he just gets so he, he's kind of like Hickman esque in his research and the way he goes back and finds stuff. Yeah. Um and picks stuff from other books and finishes off with like loose ends and stuff like that. Nice. He's just just love the guy. Are you reading Ultimates? I am I actually that's funny cuz I'm I'm getting I pulled the first couple issues out of our bins and I've got the last ones off the shelf and I'm ordering the middle issues and I'm just going to read the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> very cool. Because people have been talking very highly of what he's been doing with Ultimates. I, I want to get into it because I was looking through that last issue and I was like, my gosh, this is just really cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and and speaking of the cosmic stuff, well, Ultimates is doing. That's what Rocket's going to be doing here. It's a dirty universe that's about to get dirtier, <laughs> folks. He thought he could stay clean and stay on the up and up, but Rocket always gets sucked back in. Now, due to an old flame of his, he's back in the heist game. If you need a safe crack, a vault busted, or a score taken, ask for Rocket. Just don't call him a raccoon or a clam wash or clam. <laughs> That's what they do, don't they? They wash their food in the river. Yeah. I, I, yes. <laughs> I don't know. For those of you that saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2, they had other names for them as well. So there you go, guys. Yeah. Enjoy Rocket number one dropping this week. What about you, Mark? Uh, this is a Secret uh, Empire tie-in. Um, I think it's the only one this week, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Secret Warriors number one, a new Secret Warriors series from Matthew Rosenberg uh, and Javi Garan. And Matthew Rosenberg is kind of a hot commodity. He's uh, done some stuff recently that's that's uh, that's selling pretty well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he did like Black Mask stuff. He's got a yeah. couple books over there. He's doing the Kingpin series right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think he's doing one or two other Marvel things as well. Yeah, yeah they're giving him they're giving him some uh, some play. That's good. Yeah, uh, they need some good young talent. You know, that's you know needle movers. Needle movers. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Captain America has been revealed to be an agent of Hydra. It, that's a spoiler if you didn't know. I'm sorry. And he's coming after Inhumans, yep. which that's where they're setting up all the not Nazi camps. Exactly, exactly. Uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Daisy Johnson, a.k.a. Quake, goes underground, teaming up with Miss Marvel, Moon Girl, and Devil Dinosaur. I don't know how you go underground with Devil Dinosaur, but Karnak and Inferno to set things right. For the Inhumans, but also for the entire country. Secret Warriors is one part coming-of-age story, one part spy thriller, all action, all heart. All heart. All heart. All heart. Don't leave that out, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm going to be checking this out. Uh, yeah, it should be good. I'm not sure if this is a miniseries or if it's an no, ongoing. No, this is supposed to be an ongoing. An ongoing. Yeah. An ongoing through the rest of Secret Empire, when uh, we'll, we'll see, see. We'll yeah, see. we'll see. They, they can change it all up. Another one from Marvel, guys. Uh, some people are really excited about this already. Star Wars: Screaming Citadel, number one from Marvel Comics. We got Karen Gillan and Mark Cachetta on board here uh, to do part one here. This is a one-shot issue, and if I'm not mistaken, this leads into the stories that will be continuing in Doctor Aphra and in Star Wars. Right. So the multi, the rest of the parts will continue in those regular series. But in this first one, Luke Skywalker reluctantly teams up with Dr. Afra. She's made him an offer he can't pass up, and that leads him to the heart of the infamous Screaming Citadel. Will Luke find what he's looking for? Can Afra be trusted? Or will they both wind up victims of the Citadel's queen? 
And again, guys, this is a one shot leading into the the rest of the storyline that would continue in the main series, just like they did with Vader down. They exactly, had one shot, and then they did the crossover. So it's, yeah, exactly, guys. <clears throat> so guys, all you Star Wars fans, the team up of Luke and Doctor Afra, have fun with that. What's up for you, bro? Uh, this is from Marvel. This is uh, Zombies Assemble number one. This is a uh, out of continuity kind of thing. I think this is a adaption from a manga mm-hmm. manga yeah. manga 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 manga, manga, manga. Um, oh there we go it's from uh yusaka komiyama yes i did it score man, man. I score did it. way to go way I to go get it <laughs> the original manga is adapted into english for the first time time and again the avengers have assembled to save the earth from destruction but they've never had to face a threat as gruesome and undead as this one now Earth's Mightiest Heroes must fight to contain an outbreak of horrifying zombies and stop them from spreading across the Earth. But not all of the Avengers will escape uninfected. Now this is like, this is not Marvel zombies. No, it's not, huh? This are, these are like just regular run-of-the-mill people zombies. They're not superhero zombies. No. Okay. No, not that, not that I'm aware of. Okay. And this, like, like you said, this is an original manga that's being adapted for English for the first time. So the, all you fans that make... If you're Avengers fans, zombie fans, manga fans, this should be right up your alley. I think this is being adapted by Jim Zub. Oh, really? I think so. He's working on it. I believe that's who is adapting this. Okay. For the for the miniseries. Very cool. Very cool. He's a he's a great candidate for it, especially with the series that that, that uh, image series that he has out now. Uh, Way, Wayward. Wayward. Yeah. Wayward. Yeah. And he's doing the Dungeons and Dragons comics and yeah. Thunderbolts. And- yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Guys, those are the new number ones that we're covering for this week. Lots of exciting stuff to check out, sink your teeth into, have fun with. Some stuff that we're really, really looking forward to this week as well. Uh, a few storyline things to touch on here real quick. We do have Titans number 11 dropping this week. Why is this important? Well, because a couple of weeks ago we talked to you about some huge changes coming to Deathstroke with issue number 21, I believe. Well, those changes start now with, t- with Titans number 11 this week, the Lazarus Contract Part 1. Deathstroke has found out that Wally West's return holds the key to Deathstroke bringing his son back from the dead, and he'll stop at nothing to do just that. This is going to be the de- debut chapter chapter of the epic crossover event you've been waiting for. It's going to have huge ramifications for the Titans as well as Deathstroke as well. So we're I'm looking forward to this and checking this out to see how it affects him. Yeah, and I think this runs through Titans, Teen Titans, and Death, Deathstroke. I think so as well. Yeah. I think so as well. Uh, so guys, and then on and then on the other <clears throat> side of that, we're going to have a different Deathstroke uh, on the with uh, issue twenty one. So, changed man, changed man indeed, sir, indeed. Guys, uh, we would normally have some more DC storyline stuff, like the, the continuation of the Button story, the last part, exactly. But that's been delayed another couple of weeks because of uh, some switch ups they did with Batman number twenty two, which was like the third part of the story. But the next part, which will be Flash number 22, will be out another another two to three weeks uh, because of some delays with getting that all together and some writer switch-ups and things like that. So that's what's happening with that. Uh, and no Secret imp- imp- Empire stuff except for the Secret Warriors that we mentioned, but no right. other one-shots or anything like that for this week uh, that I saw. No, but, um, I mean, the storyline's still going on strong. If you've read the number one issue, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, yeah, yeah. And I was just talking to Chris before the show how it's kind of turning me around and I'm starting to get really interested in it. And uh, I've just been very uh, impressed with how Nick Spencer has put this whole thing together. And it's been pretty dang well done from what I've seen and read so far. Yeah, and and, and zero issue, Secret Empire zero, and Secret Empire number one? Yeah. Yes. So it's really some, really some spectacular... I'm not, I'm not gonna throw out game changing, but but man, well, I kind of I kind of believe that. I, yeah, and and really set it up well. Like we talked about last week. I mean, tomorrow was free comic book day, so that issue comes out, and mm-hmm. I'm there are some some things going on in number one that we don't really have answers for yet, and right. I don't know if that free comic book day issue is gonna address some of those or not. So right. Right. We'll find out. Yeah, looking forward to it. Look, Really, really looking forward to it. Uh, but guys, for news, it's kind of a news slow. It was a very slow news week. It really was. Like, <laughs> zero. Yeah, I mean, seriously. So, so 
instead of doing news, we're going to be recommending some new comic series to you guys that we've enjoyed and have really impressed us or just caught our eye or caught our attention. Uh, they caught our interest, but now they have our attention. Yes, they How did. about that? There we go. Reached, grabbed us and said, read me, read, read me, read me, read me. So, guys, we got a couple of different series that, that we both are going to recommend. We'll, we'll bounce back and forth. Sure. Uh, for some recommended comic series, if you haven't checked them out, check them out. These are some that we're really enjoying. I'll start it off uh, from Marvel Comics. I am really enjoying the new Iron Fist series. I really, especially that third issue where he fights the guy with no arms. <laughs> I love that cover, number one. That's yeah. a fantastic cover. Beautiful. And that guy it, that he fights in there was, a, he almost kicked his butt, man. It was, it was really good. But this has been, this is, this is like Iron Fist the way he should be, man. Yes, there exactly. is an intriguing story. There is a, there is an overarching story going on, but it's about him fa- finding an opponent, opponent and he's fighting and he's, Climbing up this this challenge ladder, yeah. And there's people trying to trying to get back into the good graces of Kun Lun and the story going on. But there's deceits along the way, tricks and deceivery and all this. But the fighting, Mike Perkins is killing it on the art, as far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah, I love stuff. Great looking book. Yes, very very. And they Great even have fun. Uh, there's a couple of panels where I saw where they have fun with the uh, with the martial arts moves, like they're, like there's kick of kick of the dove or something. But one of them was like uh, a hot slice of ribs <laughs> so you know it was like it was a punch of the ribs and it was like hot slice of ribs or something it's not all the way through, but there's an occasional one thrown in there I that i know baby back baby back baby <laughs> yes exactly but guys uh ed brisson mike perkins iron fist if you haven't been checking it out and you love classic martial arts kung fu classic iron fist stuff it's, that's, it's, that's happening right here yeah so. it really is it's more it's a lot more like iron fist than he's not funny smarty guy like he is in Power Man Iron Fist. He's right. more like old school Danny Rand. So if you yeah, it's, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. What do you got to recommend, Mark? Um, my first one is Rock Candy Mountain. Um, I, I wasn't going to pick this up. I mean, it looked funny and all that, but I wasn't going to pick it up but I decided to and I'm glad I did because it is just flat out awesome. It's The art is probably not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Right. Um but the story is just great. It's, I mean, it's a hobo, but there's more to him than meets the eye. He's after the rock. He's trying to find Rock Candy Mountain, which is the object of a song, an old song. Right. Um, and the whole first issue just about takes place in a, in a box car. Exactly. You know, and there's a big fight in the box car. There's a billionaire <laughs> son hobo. Uh, there's a great sound effect. Yes. <laughs> when, when he kicks a guy in the head. Uh, it's it's just a fun series. The main character's name is Jackson. He's a hobo, but there's a lot more to him than meets the eye. He winds up riding a car with another guy that's like just a hard luck guy. Nothing ever goes right for him. He's trying to get back to his home and he hops a train. And then the other hobos. I mean, it's it's a fun it's a fun read. It really yeah. is. Yeah, that yeah. There's, that was... there's a lot more to it than just hobos on a train, right? Or snakes on a plane. No, hobos on a train. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. As a matter of fact, the guy that's looking for him that beats up that goes through a hobo camp at the beginning he looks like a demon. So right. Yeah. Um, exactly. So I mean, there's something go- there's <laughs> something going on. Yeah. Here. More than just you know train hopping and all that, so yeah. it's it, it's a fun it's a fun read. Yeah, it could be it could be like end of the world type stuff for all it we could know. be it apocalypse. Could, I, I don't know what I don't I haven't done any research into Rock Candy Mountain to see if that's an actual song or if it's actually like from a song. Yeah, um, but I may do that tonight. I may <laughs> Google that tonight. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Just, yeah, I, well, I recommend it too. It was it, the art reminds me of like you know remember the Blue Beetle comic strip? Yeah, in the papers or. or Beetle Bailey. Beetle, Beetle Bailey. Bailey, yeah. Beetle Bailey. It's kind of like that, but like then the, the adult tone comes in on right. top of that, you know? Yeah, it's very cartoony. It's not cartoon-y. exactly, yeah, but the car- it's very uh, cartoony like that. Have, yeah, check that out, guys. Rock Rock Candy Mountain. Have fun with that. Another one from uh, that I really enjoyed here recently was from Lion Forge Comics, the debut issue of their Catalyst Prime Universe, or Superhero Universe. It's uh, Noble Number 1. Uh, I had a chance to read that and check that out. Very impressed with that first issue. That first issue was very uh, tons of action in it. I loved it. Uh, it was just like fast paced. I mean, you you could read it very quickly, but the story was totally there. And it, and, it, and and their superhero universe that they're introducing is supposed to be very science based. So in this first issue, we're we're, we're uh, 
following a team tracking down someone that they're that they're trying to reacquire and reapprehend. But it was a it was a space astronaut that was supposed to be dead, pre presumed dead. But he's not obviously, and he's changed on top of that. Uh, so Rod, I think it was Roger Robinson is the artist for this first uh, issue. Really enjoyed that, and uh, really looking forward to checking out the new stuff that's coming out from Lions, Lions Forge Comics, especially their Catalyst Prime imprint with the superhero stuff and how that's going to be infused with more science uh, than than maybe what you're used to. But uh, definitely check out Noble Noble Number One when you get a chance. Uh, well, next up for me was Plastic, and I know we talked about this and. Th this book was it was entertaining from start to finish it's filled with wrongness yes. um, but it's great it's a great read um, I like the art um, I'm not familiar I'm not sure who the creative team is on it I didn't memorize all that stuff but um, the story moves along well it uh, he winds up I mean it, he, you can tell that he's not been a nice person in the past right and um you know he kind of goes off on some guys at a, i think it's a gas station or a little convenience store yes uh because they insult his woman exactly <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, yes they do but yeah he winds up um he winds up you know in a house and the cool thing to me is when the guy is kind of interrogating him or telling him what he's wants him to do or whatever and he's just kind of looking around noticing everything like yes the square footage of the room yes. and they're over water and there's you know a fan over here he's so you can tell he's done something you know he's this is like second nature to him so, yes uh it's definitely an interesting story the 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 cliffhanger i guess the ending um he's gonna have to go back to doing i guess what he was doing before right yeah and uh, but it was a good read. It was fun. It's just very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's so many ways. Yeah. Speaking of very wrong, uh, another one that I've been checking out from Vertigo, Savage Things. Uh, I think they're on the third issue right now. This is by Justin Jordan and Mustafa Ibrahim. Uh, this is good. This is solid, man. I, and I'm not. I don't mean that in any derogatory way towards the creators. I've read previous things from Justin Jordan, Le uh, Legacy of Luther Strode, some of the other mini series that he's done with other companies. This is this is like this is very solid uh, with a depth to it that that I, I I appreciate coming from Justin Jordan that I haven't. I don't really think I felt before. But this takes a look at this a, a clandestine. Uh, government agency that basically trains psychopaths to do what they want to do, but now the psychopaths are out from underneath their control and doing their own thing, but they're right. using their what they've been taught, plus their own twists of what they've been taught against the government now. Okay. And they go to this one guy who was a part of all of that, who was a part of all of that, and maybe even the best part of all of that, in a very bad way, uh, to go to fight against these these uh, psychopaths, these sociopaths, and psychopaths. Uh, to stop the mayhem and the chaos and the destruction that they, that they are causing. Uh, so so far, it's been it's been solid, and I've been genuinely impressed by uh, 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 Abraham's art. Uh, oh yeah, I've looked through that book. It's a nice. Book. It's very a very good looking art. Very yeah. solid. Great storytelling along <clears> with <throat> that, and the story is a bit is it's adult in tone and kind of dark because these these people involved in this were trained as kids. They were seen and recognized for their for their differences as kids. And that difference has just been nurtured 20 years, 25, 25 years later. Okay. Uh, so I've really, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, check out Savage Things. It's from DC Comics, the Vertigo imprint. Check it out if you haven't already. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to throw a superhero in here. Um, I picked up the latest issue of Green Lanterns um, because I saw it had Kyle Rayner in it. And, I mean, Kyle was the Green Lantern. Not the first Green Lantern I read, but the most Green Lantern I've read. Right, right. Um <laughs> And I like Kyle, and so I picked it up and um, just kind of on a whim and went through it, and it, it was solid. I liked the book. Um, the, the writing is good. Uh, I was not familiar at all with the new, uh, the two new lanterns. I don't know. I don't know much about Simon Baz at all, and I don't know much about the the. the I can't remember Jessica Cruz. Jessica Cruz. Um, and I learned a little about them along the way. Right, right. And there's a very cool scene um, where all the Green Lanterns are together on uh, on uh, Mogo, and uh, you know the end, the last page, 
you know, they're fixing to start uh, Jessica's training full force, and her trainer is going to be Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner for real? Yeah. That's awesome. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so I figured I'd just throw a superhero one in there. We've done a lot of independent stuff, uh, one from the big two, and, and one that this is the first thing I've read. This is the first issue I've read since the rebirth and all that. And I enjoyed it. It's got nice art. The writing was solid and a uh, cool story. And I'm hooked. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go forward with it. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, uh, what, you had another one you no, were going to mention, no? Well, guys, the one that both Mark and myself read that we really enjoyed. The first issue just came out this past week, and I hope you can find it. Do we have copies here? We do not. We're sold out right now. We're trying to get some more in. And that book, guys, Pestilence, number one. Magic Shot Comics. We got Frank Thierry on board here writing this series, and I, I, I forgot the guy Oleg. Somebody is the yeah. artist. Uh, yes, this was a such, such a solid first issue. It really was. Um, and the the twist, the big twist of this, is that the Black Plague that we're all familiar with is this great disease that happened many many years ago. Obviously, tons of people in Europe. Yes, that it was maybe uh, it looks like it was actually the first undocumented case of the zombie apocalypse or a zombie Plague, epidemic right yeah. yeah and it it was just a fun there's a lot of uh a lot of profanity so it's that, adult it's very adult um but it's it was a solid 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 first issue yes i, I love solid the opening setup. Set, set up with the with them going to that to that one place and taking that guy down yeah i love that setup that was that was gonna happen they did, they just didn't know they were like it's like like a case of you're dead but you don't even know right it right you know? <laughs> exactly very very good there yeah and then and then we they even get go along with their first actual encounter of of an undead yeah, uh, in this issue, and yep. there's more to come with that. Obviously, oh, yeah, yeah they're the end scenes and all that from the Vatican. Yeah, um, yeah, it was just this is really this is a solid, solid first issue for yeah, this I, series. I can't wait for the second issue. I know it's like <laughs> uh, you know? the artist. I was telling Mark earlier, the artist kind of reminds me of a, a mix of like Joel Jones and maybe some Carlos Barberi. It's uh, kind of come kind, of, kind of Humberto Ramos style, maybe a, a little, little bit, a but, little not bit as, but not as not as exaggerated yeah it's a like on a smaller scale on a more i don't want to say realistic but less humberto but a little bit of yeah yeah i mean just a touch uh, <clears throat> yeah if you've seen joel I, I would really mix it more of like a humberto ramos meets joel jones joel jones uh uh who's done stuff in, in the past as well uh but yeah that was yeah that was a solid first issue and i i love to get these issues in my hands and, and uh, just, it, there's nothing more exciting than a, a great first issue of something. Yeah, that you don't. I mean, you kind of know the premise, but you don't really know what's going to happen. And, yes, you know. So it's all it's like you know, opening a, cre a Christmas present. You know. Yes, exactly. You know, I love it. That's a great thing about comics, man. Every week can be a Christmas yeah, week for every you. Every Wednesday, which is awesome, man. Every Wednesday is Christmas. Exactly. So, guys, these are some of our recommendations. Uh, tell us in the comments below some new stuff that's really impressed you. I've sure. talked uh, before about Redneck and God Country and uh, you know several other things. Uh, we're really focusing on some newer stuff here, right? Uh, uh, primarily, <clears throat> but but anything that that you checked out here recently that's just blown you away and converted you into getting them, getting that series. Let us know in the comments below. Let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, uh, speaking of speaking of something that's been genuinely surprising and that we're both on board for. That leads us into our question of the week. And that question of the week is simply this. What are your thoughts on Marvel's Secret Empire series so far? We briefly mentioned some stuff earlier in the storylines. Yeah. But I'm catching up on some stuff. I've read the Zero issue and I've read the first issue. And there has been a totally different meaning applied to the phrase Avengers Assemble. Yeah. That, I, that and came I out of know, field. I want to know more. Yes. I want to know how. I want to know why. Exactly. And maybe they'll cover that in the free comic book day issue. Maybe they won't. I don't know, but I, I, I want to know how that happened. Yes. You know? Yes. Because they don't ever say anything, except for one of them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> and, and, you know, uh, with the with the Zero issue, we get a the, we get a big climax to uh, the stuff that's been going on here. We've got the, we got the war going on on three fronts, really. Yeah. And, and he just, uh, that all just came together so well. Yeah. It, it did. It was very well done. It, whether it, you like the story or not, I mean, whether you like the content, whatever, it's, it's been orchestrated pretty dang well. Uh, Sh Sharon Carter's uh, 
denial of yeah. the moment of the situation was was really strong. That was it, it was kind of heartbreaking to be honest with you. Yeah, and and I mean, there's there's a couple of heartbreaking scenes, you know. I mean, it's... yeah, in that zero issue, there really are. It's yeah, that was really. Oh man, I was just like, I, I didn't want to like this series. <laughs> I did, I, I did not. Well, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I didn't want to like this, but the more I read, it's, you know, sucking me in. It, it really is. And, and then we get to the uh, to the first issue uh, where it's all changed. People are, are there. They are they are not comfortable with what's happened here with with the status quo, especially Sharon Carter, who's still given a bit of freedom. Yeah, uh, she's still she's still by Steve's side. In his attempt to try to, to try to convince her that this is who he has been all along, right? But we do get in this. <clears throat> just be prepared. There's a couple of heartbreaking moments in here with Captain Marvel, uh, who we yeah. don't know if she's going to survive this. I'm quite sure that she will, but yeah. it looks very dire for her. But not everybody. There's there's supposed to be more casualties. That yes, yes. And and in the first issue of Secret Empire, we have a major casualty of the. Uh, a, universe. a classic Marvel character that's been there basically since the beginning. Yes. Um, you know, and he's he's never been a uh, he's always been a supporting character, but yep. but he's been a supporting character for a lot of people, and it, yeah, it was just uh, it was very uh, sad. Yeah, yeah, it was. It really was. Especially the last words out of his mouth. Yeah. Yeah, now it's just like, oh, yeah. no, no. Yeah. Hey, but you got your answer finally as to who his Avengers were. Yeah, I did. I was his wondering Avengers that. team. There. Now I just want to know why. Oh, maybe maybe that's, hopefully, maybe we'll get that with the free comic day issue. Yeah. Maybe that's what, that's what we get explained. And there. are they all really, is there a mole? Is there? Could there be? Is there a mole? Could there be? Uh, the uh, It was kind of predictable for Haw Hawkeye's role in all this is kind of predictable to yeah. me. Uh, doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, no. And, and Black Widow's role as well. But uh, the yes, there's a major casualty uh, in this, and uh, it's yes, it gives a whole new meaning to to. And I can't honestly, I it's very well uh, when you look at some of these things that Captain America set up. For this huge takedown, yeah, I'm like I, a prime example with what's he's going thought on. Of everything. He's thought of it all. He's, man. He's, he's I mean, he's thought Captain, of it all. He's Captain America still. He's the master strategist. Yes. He, he knows. I mean, he's he's thought of it all, and uh, and and he's he appears to be doing some struggling. He doesn't really. Mm -hmm. I mean, he winds up doing things that he doesn't necessarily want to do. So right. there's something pulling at him or something. To me, um, he's like played the part too well. Yeah. And now he's and now he can't live up to that anymore. He has to he has to go with what he truly believes. Oh, and there's already some dissension in the Yeah. In the in the Yeah in the, the, the core Hydra uh, whatever they call that. Super group. Yeah. <laughs> whatever yeah, the, they're whatever they're like they're like, Illuminati or whatever. Right, right, you know, the main yeah. people above that. But yeah. <clears throat> they have a name for it, but I'm I'm, I'm blanking, but Yeah, same here. But guys, major yeah, this is this has been this has been really big. I mean, for, as far as the Marvel universe, Mark and I were talking, and there's been so many story stories here, big events and stuff. This is really on track to be one of the one of the better ones, if not one of the best ones. It here. really is. It's, it's been yeah, it's been very well orchestrated. It's been very well done. It's been obviously been thought out yeah. and all that. It hadn't just been thrown together, which some of theirs seem to be. Yeah. Um, this is this. It's been impressive, and it's you know it's changing my mind. Uh, and I'm definitely on. You know, if they made this statement or whatever. Please stick with the story. We're sorry if this and this offends you, or whatever. I, I'm willing to give Marvel a chance with the rest of the story. Easily, I'm, I'm going with. I it. hope they keep the momentum. You got the multiple artists on board here to tell. You know, two issues here with this artist, three yeah, issues here. You know, keep it if, going, keep it flowing. If if this thing gets starts getting delayed, oh my gosh! Please, guys, please. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that the that the yeah, the rotating artists will keep this going on time and all that. Yeah, they've got three so far. As much as flack as they've been getting lately, man, if this thing <laughs> this thing gets delayed, oh man, it's going to be ugly. They need a break. So, so yeah. so far, Mark, we have we have all the Captain America stuff, uh, Steve Rogers stuff, obviously. Yeah, the Secret Empire Zero and the Secret <clears throat> Empire Number One. Are you saying this is something to get on board with? What are you saying? Yes, absolutely. Come yeah. in. Um, we've still got. A handful of number zeros, 
Um, and it's probably not 100% necessary to get that, but, I mean, if you can get it, get it, because it's it it, it sets the whole thing up. Yeah, it really, it's, a, it's a foundational issue. I mean, yeah, it, I guess it is. It, I guess you really should. I mean, I, I don't know that you could do without that as far as the story goes, because it does set everything up. Yeah, a lot of Zero issues are like somebody's yeah. dialogue about something that happened three weeks ago or right. something. This zero issue no, it's, is it's based for this. It's pretty crucial. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cr- It should have actually. I don't know why they didn't just call that number one. They well, they could have just made a double size number one yeah. and just really threw you into it. Yeah. With that whole like a double <clears throat> double sized issue. There. Yeah, they could have probably done that. And... Yeah, gr- uh, great great artwork on both issues. I'm I'm saying get on board, guys. Check yeah. this out. Check this out. I've I'm I'm impressed so far. To be honest, I was pleasantly surprised. By how interesting it was and how much I liked it. Yeah. I was I was like several other people. I was just prepared to hate it. I'm tired of the Hydra Cap crap or whatever, you know. But I'm on board here. I'm, I'm check this out and see where this story goes. And hopefully Marvel can keep the momentum going and, and tell a great story with this it. This is this is where, you know, if Randy was here, he would be Yeah, he would not be on board. He would be, <laughs> he would be thumbs down. And, but and guys I was, I was in that camp for a while. Yeah, exactly. I honestly was. I did not want to like this series, but it is that is sucking me in. Yeah. I, I was actually a bit on board with the first several issues. I just we discussed it in the videos and stuff. Uh we talked about it a little bit. I was actually on board at first with it. The, um there's been a little bit of a lull for me, but now I'm back on board and I'm definitely gonna check out what's what's gonna happen with the rest of this. So in the comments below guys, tell us what you think of yeah. Secret Empire so far. Everything leading up to this, if you want to, but you know, really, we're hoping that you've read zero issue and the number one issue, and tell us what you think of that in the comments down below. Let's have a discussion about that. Because, Absolutely, yeah, because we're we've got the first two uh, Cap Steve trades. Yeah. So if you want to get caught up on that, you know that that's. I mean, we can if we don't have them. I know we have them now. Yeah. If, if we sell them, then we can get them back in pretty quick. So. And same for this, the recommended series that we talked about earlier. Right. Uh, we have almost all of that in stock. I, I know Pestilence is sold out, but we'll more likely get a, another shipment of that in. We are trying. We're trying to get that. Uh, everything else, yes, we have that in stock. Come and get it. And yeah, any any time you're in the shop and there's something that you're looking for that you don't see, just ask. Yeah. yeah. And, and if we can possibly order it, we're going to get it for you. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. <clears throat> all you got to do is ask, guys. Uh, wrapping this up, Mark, you had a shout out to make. Uh, yeah, just it was a great week um, on the YouTube uh, comments. Mm-hmm. Had a lot of fun uh, interacting with our you know regulars and all that, and I, I'd love to see that keep up. Uh, I'm gonna be there a lot. You know, I'll be there every week now. Um, you know, throwing my little two cents out there. And uh, it was just a fun week for that. Had right. a lot of good discussions. Yes, a lot of thanks for participating, guys. Yes, we love thank you talking very much. to you guys. Yeah, and and I've, it's been a busy week for me, so I appreciate Mark stepping in and interacting with you guys and talking to you guys. We love talking comics. This this is what we do. You know, this is what we do. So, guys, that's 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 really exciting. Please keep it up, guys. That's it for this week. Special shout out to Brad Campbell. You know what he does, guys. He makes these videos look awesome. He's a huge part of this team, and we really, really appreciate the work that he does on each and every video every week. Anything else to add, sir? I'm hungry. I'm kind of hungry, too, to be honest with you. <laughs> About to make something happen. Yeah. So, guys, finish up, finish up, leave some comments. We can still have something to eat. But, guys, read some great comics. Leave us some fantastic comments down below, and we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.